my friends are sins. Anybody that watches this channel on a regular basis will be aware that I've got a wee bit of a penchant for alternative input devices. From the Rolly Seaboard to the Lindstrom and everything in between, I'm really drawn to that kind of thing. I think part of the reason for that is that I'm a firm believer in the idea that if you change up your process or the tools that you use as part of your creative endeavours, then it can inspire you to make music in ways that you might never do otherwise. Now because of this particular proclivity, I tend to be on the lookout all the time for weird and wonderful devices that I could experiment with. And fortuitously, the folks that make the particular MIDI device that I'm going to be showing you today got in touch with me just after I was eyeing them up on YouTube. They're a wee company from France and they make a device called the Jeu Play, which I am almost certainly saying wrong. I have to apologise for that, despite the fact that I spent many years learning French in high school. My accent from, you know, the West Coast of Scotland just doesn't really play nicely with that flowery French, French language and so um, I, you're just going to have to live with it. I apologise. I'm not going to say jeu, I'm going to say jeu and that's just how it goes. The idea behind this MIDI controller is actually pretty cool in that it's got a multifunctional and modular design. You get a singular base unit which you can then use in conjunction with a variety of different rubberized pads. They've got a selection of control configurations on them. So there's a piano pad, there's a kind of more like an MPC strike pad. There's also even this guitar kind of neck pad on there which is really unusual. But the general concept is that you can switch out the rubberized pads very quickly and easily depending on the particular use case you have whether you're using a drum machine or I don't know a synthesizer or whatever it might be. The way it works as far as I understand is that each rubberized pad has got an RFID chip or similar in it which means that as soon as you place it down on the bass unit it instantly recognizes what pad is on there, how everything's set up and seamlessly switches between them which is pretty cool to see and use and practice. Now before I go on to talk a bit more of the functionality of the device let's talk a wee bit about the build quality and some of the specific connectivity that's in there. The Zhu Play itself is constructed using wood and metal. It has this kind of wooden body that is smooth and reminiscent to me at least of the Lindstrom, which if you know how well built that thing is, is fairly high praise indeed. It doesn't feel cheap and actually feels a lot more premium than I expected it to, which is you know, a nice surprise. In terms of the rubberized pads, of course this is a very important thing because you're going to be touching and using them quite a lot as a MIDI controller after all. They have a really nice kind of feel to them and they are fairly, well, they're much thicker than I expected them to be, although it may not be immediately clear on the camera there. Uh, the rubber itself is fairly soft and smooth, but also kind of thick and, you know, solid enough in the places that you actually have to interact with it. And they're rather pleasant to use which is good. In terms of connectivity, the Zhu Play uses USB-C for power and for MIDI. Included in the box is a USB-C to USB-C cable, which is great if you're on a Mac, but also it includes a couple of adapters in there, which is really nice. Uh, so if you have an older Mac or you know an older laptop in general, which still uses the standard USB-A connection, you've got it in there, you don't need to buy a separate cable. And also there's what appears to be an Apple Lightning adapter which is great if you've got an iPad or something like that. Now, if you're like me and you've got a hardware-based studio or perhaps even a hybrid setup, then you might be disappointed to see that there's just a USB-C connection on there. However, the company that makes the controller have thought of this and they have released something called the Reconnect cable, which you can buy for something like, I know, 39 euros at the time of recording this video. And the idea effectively is that it converts the USB-C connection into five pinned in MIDI. Of course, you do have to supply power via a wee tendril thing, you know, just a phone charge or something like that but it does give you the option to use the controller with your five pinned in MIDI synthesizers and drum machines and all that which is you know quite nice. On the software side of things there's a couple of different apps available for the Zhu Play specifically. The first one is called the Zhu Editor and this allows you to change up the different MIDI messages that are sent for each individual element. So for example this wee squishy knob here I don't really know what it's called 
uh, this can be remapped so that it acts as a pressure controller or you know an XY controller. You can change the different values for each individual element. You also have control over the MPE and the aftertouch values that are sent. And in general, whilst the app itself is fairly basic, you know, in you know relative terms, it has quite a lot of options in there for customizing all of the different bits and bobs. And I, that isn't something that you should take for granted with MIDI controllers because I have got a lot of MIDI controllers that you expect. You should be able to change some of the particular parameters and you just can't as you know a fixed value or you can only change it to a MIDI note. You can't change it to a CC value and I haven't run any, any of those problems with the Zhu. So there's a decent amount of customization and customizability, I guess, with the app. Now, the other app that has been specifically designed for use with the Zhu Play is much more focused on making and playing music. It's available for Mac and Windows like the other one, but also available on the iPad, which you know, is nice if you don't have a DAW or anything like that. And I think that's really what this app is designed for or who it's uh, targeted at because you can play along in there with some well-known songs, get used to how the pads work, but also I believe you can kind of record and create your own compositions in there. That's not something that I've spent a lot of time with, if I'm totally honest. I've played about with it, but I, you know, I make music in Logic and all the other stuff. So um, I can see how this would be good for someone who is starting out making music and getting used to everything. At this stage, let's talk a wee bit about use cases because obviously MIDI controllers can be utilized in a vast array of different applications. And I don't want anyone to think that by doing this video and suggesting something now that you should all immediately rush out and buy the Zhu Play irrespective of what your individual needs are because obviously your requirements will differ. I do think that there are some particular scenarios where this controller is really useful and I've found great within my own workflows and so I'm going to talk about some of the strengths things I think it's good at and some of the areas that you might want to consider in that regard. The first thing that I really love about the Zhu Play is its flexibility and its versatility with respect to the fact that in order to change up its configuration, all you have to do is switch out the rubberized pads and you can do that really quickly and easily. Now, this meant that when I was experimenting with different use cases for this video, I could basically just leave it sitting on my desk and if I wanted to use it with my Akai um, S6000 and trigger some drum samples, I could switch out the pad. If I wanted to use it with my OB6 synthesizer, I could do that. If I wanted to use it with a software synthesizer, particularly one that allowed me to experiment and get the full benefit of the MPE for the multi-polyphonic expression in there, I could also do that and I didn't have to, you know, constantly switch to different MIDI controllers and everything. That is one of its biggest strengths as far as I'm concerned. Its multifunctionality is brilliant. <laughs> The second thing that I love about the Zhu Play is its portable nature. Yes, it is well built, but it's also lightweight and compact. And when you combine that with the multifunctionality of the different pads, it becomes a really useful tool for taking away with you. Or if you're like me and you're a lazy bastard and you want to just sit on the couch sometimes and make music without having to go through and connect different cables up, it is also really helpful for that as well. This kind of leads on to my final thing that I really like about it, or at least a particular use case where I think the Zhu Play shines, and that is as a companion for a suite of VSTs. So for example, if you're somebody that likes to make music within Logic or Ableton, and you have a big collection of VST instruments, for example, in my case, the Arturia V Suite with a whole bunch of, you know, interesting reproductions and effects and everything else, then this is a brilliant kind of addition to that because you can very easily, again, change out the configuration depending on the VST that you've got loaded up within a single controller. Over the past wee while, I've really enjoyed experimenting with the Zhu Play and trying it out in a variety of different scenarios. I would say that if you're looking for a MIDI controller primarily to use with hardware instruments, then there's probably better options out there in the market for that use case. However, if you're looking for a portable controller for a selection of VST instruments or software in general, then it is a particularly great option. <laughs> Now, 
Now, whilst the Zhou play is a fantastic controller and can be useful in a variety of different situations, I would say that if you're interested in buying one, you do need to be aware of what it is in the sense that you're not going to get the experience of playing on a keyboard controller from the rubber pads. It is a very different feeling and it takes a wee bit of time to get used to the pressure and how everything kind of responds. So if you really just want a piano controller, then just get a piano controller. But if you're looking particularly for something that will let you play about with MTE and expression and again, switch between functionality very quickly, then this is something you should take a look at. In conclusion, the Zhou Play is a really cool idea that's been really well executed in practice. It can do a whole variety of different things, but I think it's got a few particular unique strengths about it that will make it particularly useful for certain requirements and use cases. And with that stunning uh, summary, I will bid you adieu. Thanks for watching and until next time, au revoir.